Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Medic Wall Plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the new uh, molding plugin, or not plugin, sorry, uh, module that I've just created, or draw molding tool. So the first thing you notice is that I've added it to the Medic Blocking toolbar. So now the toolbar has actually been renamed Medic Blocking Molding, slash molding. Um, and you'll also notice that I've only added in one icon, which is the draw tool. I've not added in the edit or the delete tool. And really the reason for that is just simply because I've determined that, uh, you know, I don't want to overpopulate the more toolbars than the need to be. And really, if you right click on the moldings, you can uh, take care of all the functions that you need to take care of. So let's get started with this. And the first thing I'm going to show you is just that the molding tool, uh, once you click on it, yeah, sorry, that popped up on my other window. So <clears throat> this tool can be used uh, with any geometry, with any walls. It's not specific to Medic walls. So like, for instance, if I had some walls out here for whatever reason, um, I could just go ahead and start placing uh, points. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put down three points. Now once you get where you want to go, the path, you just go ahead and hit the Enter key and there is your crown molding okay um, so you notice that I went the left direction now if I go this direction um, let's go ahead and try that again so I'm gonna go this direction now let's go ahead and hit enter and you'll notice that basically it kinda of follows what I call a right hand or left hand rule so what that allows you to do is you can kind of predict you know which way it's going to face and if you don't like how it faces it's very simple to flip that around so basically to edit these you just right click on the assembly hit edit molding assembly and you'll notice that the molding direction is set to left I'm gonna go ahead and set that to right and I'm gonna update okay and now you're gonna notice that we've effectively flipped it around Okay, so this one here, let's say we want to, we don't like that it's that way, maybe it's in the inside, the outside, whatever it might be. You just need to toggle it by flipping the direction. Okay, so just to avoid a little extra confusion there. Um, the other thing you might want to be aware of is, let's go ahead and flip that around one more time. Okay, so the placement, the default placement for these moldings is basically at the center of the, the area of the molding. So for a crown molding, you're going to typically use top left or top right to place it. See, if you were to place it on center, on the what I call the molding location, that's going to, basically our reference line was this point here. So it's centered it up. Let's say if we did top right, it should position it right there with respect to our original reference line. So let's go top right, and there you go. And same thing again, if we do uh, bottom left, we can position it like that. So that just to kind of orient yourself with what the location and the molding direction does, um, that kind of gives you the ability to position the molding with respect to the reference line that you're using. Okay, so then we also have the vertical offset. So now in some cases, um, you know, you maybe you've got a top left situation, right? And you're gonna to wanna to vertically offset up or down actually. So let's actually, um, let's just delete these two and let's go over to this basic little room I created, wall assembly, whatever you want to call it. And let's go ahead and let's put in a crown molding. So all I'm going to do is I'll click the crown molding tool. Um, we're just going to leave top left as default, molding direction left. Let's change it to say this uh, um, this other one just to have something different. Also, I haven't, I've only added in two molding types per category. And you can see I've got base molding, chair molding, and crown molding. So I've, I will be adding in others, but um, also, you know, the user can add in their own moldings. And I'm going to show you maybe how to do that either in this video toward the end or maybe another video if we get too far. So let's go ahead and hit update. And then let's go ahead and let's just start right here. Okay, and it's a little difficult. Sometimes it's better just to use a reference line. But let's just try the input point selection method, I call it main thing is we got to get the 
I gotta accurately grab these points. Sometimes it's a little tricky. You got so much geometry going on here, it wants to snap to the wrong point. But if you do it carefully, it's excuse me, not too bad. Okay, so then we end off right here where we began. Okay, and then hit enter. And there we go. Okay, so there's our crown molding all the way around the perimeter of that room. Oh, I'm back into the wall again. Just trying to avoid that. <laughs> annoying sometimes okay so that's all fine and dandy but remember now we've got this is the top of the framing and actually our sheetrock for our ceiling let's say it's half inch sheetrock is going to be you know basically a half inch down from that top of that roof our ceiling framing so actually we want to drop this by a half inch so that's where that offset button comes in so if we right click on this guy Oh, and by the way, you can also regen this. Like, for whatever reason, if you need to regen it, you have that option to do. And I will also show you that. Um, let's see. Let me go into the global settings here. Uh, I jumped that window over there. Okay. Um, notice that molding calls should be on. Yes, they are. Make sure that's on. Um, I've also okay. I've also added a molding layer to throw the molding on, and I also have some other little things here that might be of use. Uh, as you can see, this uh, so we could reset this number. Let's reset that number for the um, molding prefix, and I'm not even sure why that's PRM. I think I was just messing with it. Um, let's just call this MLD. Save settings. Okay, and then. Granted, uh, when we edit this molding assembly, we can always rename it. Um, I'm going to call it MLD1. Just hit update on that. Uh, I guess I had opened a previous file, so I'm going to turn back on layer dimension 4. So notice, notice that you have a callout for the molding. Um, so basically, I have crown, and then I have 45.7 feet. So it's calculating how much lineal footage of molding you need, and also just a, a label for it. Um, you know, you can turn that off. Of course, that's on the dimension 4 layer. Or you can actually turn it off in the global settings, where you can um, basically turn out the, turn off the molding callouts right here, as well as at the prefix and set the indexing number. So if you want to reset to a certain number, you can do that. Okay, and of course on the layers tab, you have that option to put it on a different layer. And let's take a look. Where is that here in this pile of layers? Okay, so there we go. So notice it has its own specific layer. Okay, back to the issue of the offset. So in this case, we are going to edit this guy. And now we're going to just drop it down 0 0.5 inches. Okay, so notice I put a negative number in there. You can use negative or positive. You can vertically in the z-axis move it up or down. Okay, and yeah, so it's dropped down. And also notice that... Uh, it's set at the top left on the location, right? So again, you can use that to position. You basically have what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine positions you have available to you to position that molding at. Now, if this was going around the other way, um, then you might need to switch it to right. But in this case, it's the left is the appropriate option here. And again, if you need to change it to a different um, molding type, well, we can always do that. Okay, so we can always retroactively get in here and change it even from a chair mold, a crown molding to a chair molding to anything else you want. Okay, so that is pretty basic introduction to moldings. Now, I'm going to show you how to deal with the situation, for instance, where we have this chair molding or this uh, baseboard rolling around the room here. Um, <clears throat> so, the plug in or the molding. Uh, tool does not cut out for openings in any way. It's just, you know, you kind of get what you draw. So you kind of have to draw around and terminate, you know, at these openings. So the best way I think to do that, and I don't know, there's maybe other methods. I haven't really explored everything yet, but I just take and create some construction lines. Let's say bring it up to 36 inches from the floor. And then I'll um, do the same thing with this wall. 36 inches up. It's pretty quick and easy. I mean, it's not too horrible. Um, I'm sure there are better ways, though. But 
Let's go ahead and put one here on this wall while we're at it. Sorry, all my zooming in and zooming out. I really need to get me one of those space mice. Okay, so there's our construction lines. Now I'm going to again start on the left and work my way right, only because I know that's the direction uh, that we'll use the left hand setting appropriately. But you know, it doesn't really matter because if you get it wrong, you just simply swap toggle left and right. All right, chair molding. Let's do, yeah, that one's fine. Um, top left, let's just do uh, center left. So that will position it at this point here. So top left's there, center left, bottom left. And then top right, center right, and bottom right. Okay, hit update. Now it gets a little tricky. We've got to find our way around this, this these lines here. around the room. I guess it's not too bad. It's just, you know, if you get the points wrong, um, then you got to kind of start over, I guess. Okay, so I've got the points I need. Hit enter. And there's your chair molding you've got. Sorry, into the wall again. Okay, so it terminates at two different spots. And then, of course, to do this one, you go around that way. Um, instead of doing that, though, I'm going to quickly uh, go upside down here, and I'm going to roll around the bottom and put a baseboard in. So let's go ahead one more time. This time now we're going to go base molding. Um, let's do this built up one. And this time instead of center left, we're going to do bottom left. And I think everything else should be good. Oh, and by the way, you know, you can change uh, the colors uh, of everything uh, by simply choosing one of these textures or, or custom material, sorry. Um, I'm just going to leave it at the default white for now. Okay, so same thing here. We're going to roll around, select our edges. Sorry, this takes just a bit. And the main thing I find uh, useful with this tool, really, I mean, I guess, you know, there are other tools out there you can use, Profile Builder, etc. Um, it's just the fact that you have the ability to do a few little extra things such as that vertical offset and the parametrics of it all um, so go ahead hit enter sorry uh, I'm losing my train of thought here while I'm talking so now there we've got a nice baseboard actually I'm going to hide this let's hide that maybe we can get that out of the way yeah all right um, so Right, same thing here. So, like, for instance, now, if we had the tile floor and you got some cement backer board and a bunch of tiles sitting up, maybe you want to lift that up, maybe, you know, who knows, three-quarters of an inch even. So let's go ahead and ed edit that, and this time let's lift it a positive number and hit update, and now we've lifted our, our uh, baseboard up by three-quarters of an inch to account for our uh, tile floor. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, it's it's really not that complicated. Um, there are there is the option uh, where you can use a line uh, to simply let's go ahead and unhide all for a second. So it, it it may be easier, like if you have a really complex room, to go ahead and define your path first on some sort of construction layer. Just use regular lines for that. Um, but there's a couple little things with that that you want to be aware of. Okay, so you know there's a there's a there's a fairly uh, convoluted path that we've got, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, uh, let's go back to crown molding and top lift. So notice how it's on the left, right? So if I go select edge instead of input points, now it's it's looking to see. If I select this edge, and by the way, that that uh, grid is causing me a little a little grief. I'm gonna just turn that off for a second here, and then go back here and go ahead and select edge. Update. Got everything we want, right? Oh no, we don't. Let's let's go back to that crap molding. Okay. okay Should have done all this. All right, so we got select edge. Okay, now notice the edge highlights once you've mouse over it. Just go ahead and mouse over it. Go ahead and click it. There you go. Okay, 
So, I think though it's a little bit unpredictable about as far as what it's going to do for right or left because it, you know the plugin really has no way of knowing which direction to go. So that's a little bit of a uh, I don't know. <laughs> it might go either way essentially. So if it does, then again you just need to hop in here and um, yeah, you just got to get in there and uh, change it up, right? So like let's say we don't want it going this direction. It's actually the other way. Change it to right. Okay, so now it's going the right way. Either way, uh, you should be able to manage with that. So again, um, you can trace the points out when you draw, and you use input points, or you can have an edge predefined. You just select the edge, click this one, and you should be off and running. Okay, so now what I want to talk about are the actual profiles created um, for this uh, <coughs> for this tool. So basically in your plugin folder okay and I'm going to go there and for Windows I can't remember what it is on Apple but for Windows it's like users slash username app date of roaming SketchUp SketchUp whatever the year is in this case I'm running 2017 you might be running 2021 um, I've been I can you know I've been running both but um, testing in 2017 and then SketchUp plugins and then in here you'll find of course all the plugins Go to the wall plugin, go to the library folder, go to the molding folder. Okay, so now in here is where you've got base, chair, and crown. So you're storing your files or profiles in here. Okay, so you're going to notice two things. Um, well, first of all, you're going to notice that the SketchUp files also have a PNG associated with them. So what happens is the plugin is checking to see if there is a uh, basically a, a preview image created for that particular profile. If there's not, it will create one. So the first time you use your profile that you create, you may not, you will not see a PNG file, but um, <clears throat> provided you've done everything correctly and saved it out so that you can get a decent image of it, it will automatically create that default uh, image for you. Let's go ahead and open uh, the crown molding one. And I'm going to actually open up Let's see if I've got one here. Actually, I don't, so I guess I'll have to go browse over to it. So sorry about that. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just trying to get over there. <coughs> Give me just a second here. Wall, no library. I guess I should have already had this opened up before, so it wouldn't take me so long to get to it. Okay, so. So I've just opened up this um, this particular crown molding uh, SketchUp file, right? And I typically save these in 2017 so that they're backward compatible to all the other versions after that. But you know, if for your own personal use, it's not going to really matter. It's just a matter of whichever version of SketchUp you're using. So you'll notice that in the file itself there is no special layers, there's no special materials. Um, this face has been grouped. Okay, so typically what I do is I create, I'll create the face with all the edges and then once I have everything I group it. Okay, and then I like to name the instance name the same as the file name. You don't have to do that I suppose, but I think it's just keeps things clean. And the other thing is, is I take the geometric center, I, I all usually put a line just from here to here uh, once I have this group created and I will position the molding so that its geometric center is at the origin. And notice how the um, profile is positioned on the Y axis or on the Y plane and it's in the direction of the X axis. Um, that's the way it needs to be positioned. And also um, if you're going to do, you know, when you finally save it out, you know, get it positioned. I typically do this view and then I get it positioned just about centered and get it, you know, zoomed in about like so and then it'll give a nice preview image when you when it creates the uh, the PNG file. So that's uh, pretty much it. Oh, the other item that I want to show you is that notice how the face is reversed a certain way. So it's the white side is on this side and on the negative X side it's on the it's that blue color, the inside of the uh, interior face. 
So that is important. Otherwise, you, when you create your um, the actual uh, molding solid, it will have reverse faces. Um, so just yeah, it's not critical, but it just keeps things nice and clean. So that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, you just save, uh, create your face, group it, and then save it, and then drop it um, essentially into one of these three folders. And, you know, don't enter in any spaces or weird non-alphanumeric characters. Keep it simple. Underscore is okay. And drop them in here, and, uh, yeah, you should be good to go. So... That's pretty much it, I think. Let's see, you got chair moldings. Right. So, um, yeah, and I need to add some more moldings, I guess. Um, but I will do that. Um, but again, so it's the user can add in as many as they like. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, like I said, uh, if you need to edit it, um, sorry, that's not edit showing you, but there's just the draw molding uh, toolbar uh, option here, which is the draw tool. And then you right click on the moldings itself to go ahead and edit and regen. And you can also edit the path if you need to. And yeah, it's uh, fairly straightforward. Tested in uh, 2021, I tested in 2017, so I think we've got all the bugs out of it. So, anyways, give me any feedback you like on this, uh, any questions, be happy to answer those. And as always, I thank everybody for their support, and we'll keep, uh, keep developing this thing. All right, thanks, bye.